CNN Insider says senior editors should have been treated the story with caution from the beginning because the Israeli military had a track record or false, exaggerated claims that subsequently fall apart. Mm. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I'll tell you, I, I, one of the things I was involved with last year was confronting RFK on Shireen Abu Akla, the, mm -hmm. the journalist who was assassinated by Israel. And when you dig into that one, Israel lied from the get-go. It was amazing. First, it was the, she was shot by a Palestinian. Then it was, oh, well, it had to have been an accident. Mm -hmm. And once you see that once or twice, you know that absolutely anything coming out of the IDF is not trustworthy. No. They CYA continually. They lie outright. Yeah. CNN knows that. Mm -hmm. Anyone who reports in that region knows that. Yeah. And this article also calls into question about the 40 beheaded babies, Ooh, which is, you know, does is not based in fact. There's no evidence to the claim about 40 beheaded babies. Mm -hmm. So, and then on top of that, there's also claims of the fact, which this article doesn't get into, about the sexual assault that is allegedly done by the Palestinian resistance, which there is no evidence of. So when people say, oh my God, they are worded, you know, I gotta be careful what I say on you on YouTube, but they are worded people, you know, women, or they beheaded babies, right? Yeah. There is no evidence to suggest any of that that has happened. Ooh, but not Guys, <laughs> The puppet master <laughs> is at it again. There you go. Let's get into this because this is going to be this is going to be deep. This is going to be deep. All right. So CNN is coming under fire from its own staff members for its biased coverage of the Israeli massacre of Gaza as of recently. As with all corporate news, it takes its direction from the Western governments who are puppeted by the corporations. Let's take a look at this article and break it down. So this is going to be out of The Guardian, but it is also an article that came out from The Intercept as well. I just want to share this. Let me, let me tell you, it's really hard for me to even look at Netanyahu. <laughs> it's, it's the revulsion I, I feel whenever I see that face. I'm not kidding. He's a monster. He is a That's monster. That's a natural human response. <laughs> he needs so let's take a look. Sorry, go ahead. No, he, he needs to be at The Hague. There needs to yes. be a Nuremberg too. Yeah, Full stop. an orange jumpsuit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. So this is out of The Guardian says, CNN staff say it's a network's pro-Israel slant amounts to journalistic malpractice. The blurb says, insiders say pressure from the top results in incredulous reporting of Israeli claims and silencing of Palestinian perspectives. So let's get into this. So that CNN is facing backlash from its own staff over editorial policies they say have led to a regurgitation of Israeli propaganda and censoring of Palestinian perspectives in the network's coverage of their war in Gaza. Oh my goodness. It says journalists in CNN newsrooms and the US and overseas says broadcasts have been skewed by management edicts and a story approval process that has resulted in highly partial coverage of the Hamas massacre. Ah, uh, see. You see, Guardian, you had me at first until you had to call it a massacre. See, here's the thing. Let, let me let, 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 let's make something very abundantly clear. According to international law, mm -hmm. and y'all, some of y'all are gonna get mad at me for saying this, but let's put a line in the sand and let's say facts. Yeah. What happened on October 7th and what the Palestinian resistance did was actually legal by international law. 
some people don't want to say it, but I will say it. It is legal by international law. Because by international law, it is legal for an occupied people to resist even militarily. Thank you. Now, with that being said, right, it is also fact that the IDF has also participated in the murder of their own citizens on October 7th. This has also been shown in footage from their helicopters, from their gunships, firing mm -hmm. on Israeli citizens as well. Mm -hmm. And the only child that was murdered was a baby, which was Israeli, that was killed by Israeli fire. So Israelis killed their own kid. So with that being said, you can call October 7th a horrible thing that happened. Yes. But who put the Israelis in harm's way in the first place? Thank you. Let me add something to that. 100%. 100%. You know, let's, let's carve out the number of people who were killed by friendly, quote unquote, fire. Let's also look at the fact that with Israel, the draft is mandatory. That means the vast majority of people are active IDF, retired IDF, or they are armed settlers. Those are definitionally combatants. Thank you. So I just want to clear that because the Guardian had me at first, but then the Guardian was like, well, this, this massacre, massacre, here's the thing. They went after a military target. Hmm. Let, let's, let's be real. Let's, yeah. Uh, by the way, Guardian like screwed up earlier in that article because he also called it, they also called it a war. It's yeah. not a war. That takes two participants. War. It's a slaughter. Yeah, it's a slaughter. When, one, 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 more, <laughs> one more thing, because it's like we can unpack so much in this article and we're just starting, is uh, I am a huge fan of Orwell when it comes to the fact that he highlighted how important language is. Maybe other things I don't agree with him on, but he made the point that you, when you manipulate language, you manipulate thought. And it's the most impressive propaganda tool that you will have, and you will see that throughout. Not only anything the U.S. empire does, but what's happening here now with Israel. Absolutely. So let's continue. All right. And Israel's retaliatory attack on Gaza. So it says the majority of news since the war began, regardless of how accurate the initial reporting has been skewed by a systemic and institutional bias within the network toward Israel. Ultimately, CNN's coverage of the Israel-Gaza war. See, it's not a war. It's a massacre that Israel is committing. Yes. Amount of journalistic malpractice. So it says, according to accounts from six CNN staffers in multiple newsrooms and more than a dozen internal memos and emails obtained by The Guardian, daily news decisions are shaped by a flow of directives from CNN headquarters in Atlanta that have strict, set strict guidelines on coverage. It's as they include tight restrictions on quoting Hamas and reporting other Palestinian perspectives while Israel government statements are taken at face value. In addition, every story on the conflict must be cleared by Jer the Jerusalem Bureau before broadcast or publication. Ooh. Hold up. So essentially, Israel has a direct line to influence the news coverage in the United States. You never see this from Iran, DPRK, Cuba, China, Russia, or Venezuela. Let me, just for impact's sake, you mean to tell me that a foreign government has sway over our news agencies to push a narrative that favors them? Mm-hmm. 
and they go right along with it. Why is that? This is just like how cops are interviewed by local news, but the witnesses and the citizens are largely not ever seen as credible. Even though we know cops lie and they shift the narrative in their favor. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's always police say, police, you know, claim. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to actually talking to the people on the ground, nobody wants to hear it. Yeah. They don't even air it. It's not even a matter of let's uh, yeah, minimize it. They don't even air it. By the way, I'm sure you've probably seen that video with Noam Chomsky and mm -hmm. the reporter who was mm -hmm. saying, well, uh, you know, you, you can't tell me that uh, no one tells me what to say. So how, do, how, how could this possibly be manipulated? And mm -hmm. Noam came up with probably his best comeback I've ever heard out of him, which was, it's not that, but you wouldn't be in that seat if you didn't believe what you did. Exactly. And that's from his book, Manufacturing Consent. Exactly. Yeah. Anyone who's going to rattle the cages and actually show Palestinian views will not be in a position to make that decision. Mm hmm Yep. And by the way, yes, there are Palestinian Jews and they do exist. Yes. And Palestinian Christians. Yep. And even some that are atheists. Oh, and let me also add one more thing. Sure. It's they, mm -hmm. they keep saying Hamas, 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 Hamas. There are other resistance groups in Palestine, but they have Hamas. They're using Hamas as a boogeyman and they don't mention anyone else. Nope. Not any, that at all. All right. Let's continue. So CNN staff say some journalists with experience of reporting the conflict in region have avoided assignments in Israel because they do not believe that they will be free to tell the whole story. Others speculate they're being kept away by senior editors. Quote, it is clear that some who don't belong are covering the war and some who do belong aren't, end quote, said one insider. Interesting. So here's, gosh. Yeah. This is yeah. because, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go, go ahead. Yeah. This is because the corporations are the bosses of corporate media. Oh. It's not just Pfizer that pays CNN's bills. It's ConocoPhillips, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, ExxonMobil, BP, AT&T, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These multinationals have it in their financial interest to keep the status quo. That means having an attack dog in the Middle East. That attack dog is Israel, keeping Iraq, Iran, Lebanon, Jordan, Qatar, UAE, Yemen, and all the other nations in line to keep that LNG, that liquefied natural gas, and that oil flowing without much resistance. I was about to bring that up. The the whole uh, issue with the uh, the gas fields that they found in Gaza, mm -hmm. the fact that they would, I'm sure you've heard, have you heard about the Ben Gurion Canal? Yes. Yes. As well as the liquefied natural gas that's in Gaza, as well as the oil that is off the coast of Gaza, on the West Bank. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's there's a company, uh, I'll have to get the, the information and send it to you, but there's a company called Genie Corporation. Mm. And they are very, very, very involved with, with the fossil fuel interests in that area. And a lot of people who are government and corporate on the higher end are involved. I believe Dick Cheney has something to do with that one. Don't quote me on that if I'm wrong. But Genie, do some Googling on Genie Energy Corporation. Hmm. Interesting. So, oh, and uh, one more thing is when you're dealing with the top levels of media, you're dealing with people who do hobnob with the top levels 
of the governments. So it's like, there's a lot of back and forth. It's like, oh, we don't want to say this. Oh, you don't really want to say that. So you got people going to the same cocktail parties. They're, they're going to be influencing everything. Absolutely. In fact, you're going into what I was about to bring up. Thank you so much for a great segue. So I'm going to read this. So I'll just read this part. So it says, Edicts from on high. It says, at Thompson's first editorial meeting, two days after the 7th October Hamas attack, the new network chief described CNN's coverage of the rapidly moving story as basically great. Thompson said he wanted viewers to understand what Hamas is, what it stands for, and what it is trying to achieve with the attack. Some of those listening, listening thought that was a laudable journalistic goal, but they said at the time, that it became clear that he became that he had more specific expectations for how journalists should cover the group. In late October, as the Palestinian death toll rose sharply from Israeli bombing with more than 2,700 children killed, according to the Gaza Health Ministry, and as Israel prepared for its ground invasion, a set of guidelines landed in CNN staff inboxes. Now, this is what it gets interesting. It says a note at the top of the two page memo pointed to an instruction from Mark to pay attention to a particular paragraph under coverage guidance. The paragraph said that while CNN will report the human consequences of the Israeli assault in historical context of the story, we must continue to always remind our audience of the immediate cause of this current conflict namely the Hamas attack and mass murder of kidnap of civilians, italics in the original. CNN staff members said the memo solidified a framework of stories in which Hamas massacre was used to implicitly justify Israel's actions, Israeli actions, and that other context or history was often unwelcome or marginalized. Mm -hmm. So, one staffer said, how else are editors going to read that other than as an instruction that no matter what the Israelis do, Hamas is ultimately to blame? Every action by Israel, dropping massive bombs that wipe out entire streets, its obliteration of whole families, the coverage ends up Massa message massaged to create a they had it for they had it coming narrative so basically in regards to that mm -hmm. even it didn't start on october 7th first of all yes second of all that is pure abuser language. You made me hit you. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Gosh. you know, oh gosh, we couldn't help but drop these bombs on these little kids. Look what Hamas did. Yep. Look what you made me do. Look what you look what you made me do. Mm -hmm. Basically, they don't want you to know what drove Palestinian resistance to do what they did on October 7th. Mm -hmm. They don't want to know what the situation, what the conditions were, which even mm -hmm. created anyone who would consider armed resistance. Yep. They want you to dismiss what happened over the last 75 years. Yes. That's like someone beating me up for a week. And then when I strike back on the eighth day, then everybody focuses on the hit that I did rather than what led to me striking them back. Exactly. No, exactly. We have, yeah. We have to get the dialectical analysis of the situation. We have to get the full context over what happened over the last 75 years. What mm -hmm. CNN is basically doing is making sure that the narrative has no context and the Palestinian resistance response, but giving all the grace and deference to Israel. Mm -hmm. There was, I think it was Gideon Levy who said this, and I think he said it to a Hood Barak 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong later, but he asked him outright, if you had been born Palestinian, what would you be doing now? And this is a guy who was a prime minister and he admitted, I'd, I'd uh, join a resistance group. Can you, like, okay. It's just like the question that I asked uh, on Twitter. If you were born into an open air concentration camp, I know some people don't like when I say that, but that's exactly what it is. That is what it is. Where your food, water, electricity and fuel are controlled by an occupying force mm -hmm. where even the amount of calories per day is monitored by that occupying force you have no freedom you have no freedom to move out you have no freedom to move in and even if you're not in gaza if you're in the west bank you're subject to apartheid conditions meaning there's certain roads you can't walk on you can't drive a car there's certain places that you have to go, you have to take. Where some place it takes only 10 minutes to walk to, it takes hours to go through because you have to go through checkpoints because you're always looked at as a terrorist just by the color of your skin. Thank you. And if you're sick and you need special medical care, you got to beg and plead and chances are you ain't going to get it. Exactly. Like a dialysis patient. <laughs> right? How would you feel? What would you do? And especially if you realize every single time they mow the lawn, mow the you'll lawn. get family and friends that die every single time. What would you do? What would you do if you were in Gaza? 100% exactly. There is not a human being out there who would not rebel, who would not try to break out of that? Who would not yeah. also want justice? Yeah. Look, here's the, here, here's something. What happened with my ancestors when they revolted against slave masters? Thank you. Guys and girl. Yes. What happened during in, in, in Nazi Germany when they were able to get hold of some of the weapons from the Nazis? The, Wars the, the Warsaw Ghetto uprising exactly which, which by the way let me add employed tunnels so look Nat Turner's rebellion mm -hmm. Warsaw ghetto uprising mm -hmm. so you mean to tell me that an occupied people who are going through these horrific conditions mm -hmm. you don't expect them to fight back yeah. Are, are they you kidding kidding them to lie them? down? Are you, and die? you don't expect them to fight back. Yeah, no, they, they expect them to lie down and die. And that is the problem. And by the way, if you ask, you know, I, I'm sure you probably know, uh, I'm a huge advocate of single state. Yeah. Complete right of return for every Palestinian in the world to pre-47 uh, borders. Now, these same people that are screaming, oh, we have to get rid of Hamas, we have to get rid of Hamas. If you said, okay, everybody can come back, equal rights, and we're done, you know, single secular state, you wouldn't have Hamas. But if you offer that to them, they're like, oh my God, we can't do that. So apparently getting rid of Hamas is not their priority. It never was. Because no, they were doing the same things that they're doing right now before Hamas ever existed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ilan Pape's book, The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine, is huge. Yeah. It's crucial. It's, it's 1967. Hamas yeah. didn't exist then. 48. Der, der Sien. Uh, der Yasin. Tentura. So many, I think it was about 400 villages wiped off the map. So anyone who calls it a massacre and says that that, that breaking out of, of Gaza is terrorism is out and out completely wrong. You properly bring up the Nat Turner uh, rebellion, which, uh, you know, Norm Finkelstein brings up all the time, which is great. Uh, and even if, even if there were some one, one or two people who went over the line and, and, and did kill somebody, did something wrong, yes, they should be prosecuted, 
But that doesn't mean that the act itself of rebellion is invalidated. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me go back to this article because there's a lot more. Uh, this is, oof. So this says, but CNN news desks and reporters have been instructed to not use video recorded by Hamas under any circumstances unless cleared by the triad in senior editorial leadership. What is the triad? So I'll share with you what the triad is. So the triad is a broad oversight of coverage from CNN headquarters in Atlanta is directed by the triad says new standards, practices, legal, and fact-checking. So that's the triad, right? So according to them, they cannot use any video recorded by Hamas at all, right? So even just to let you guys know, um, I can't even do it on YouTube. That's one of the reasons why I'm demonetized now. It's crazy. Because I dare share a video that was recorded by Hamas. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Even on YouTube, we're barred from using any footage by them because it's considered terrorist propaganda. By right? the way, did you did you hear about the latest legislation that's getting through uh, being pushed in Israel? Um, that anybody who quote unquote questions the narrative of uh, October seventh can be prosecuted with with a five year sentence. No, say anything that, right. that's against the narrative, and we'll put you in jail. So Israel doesn't have free speech. It doesn't. the The only democracy in in the Middle East. Oh crap. <laughs> democracy right yeah yeah now even though it may provide more context of what's going on because some of these videos I i've seen some of the videos and it provides context for what's going on even in the hostage exchange videos which isn't violent or disturbing at all right i can't show those on youtube because if i do I'll get a, either a warning or a strike. Mm. So that's how it works. This is why if you're on accounts like Twitter, it's easier to see it on there. Yeah. Telegram, really. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part. So... That's one of the things that I have to continuously go through. So let me go down to this next part. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me go to this. Let me see. Wait, where, where is it? It's, it's... I have this other part I'm supposed to go. Hang on, let me make sure I check my notes. Oh. Let me see. Wait, where is it? Let's see, we're looking for. Uh, um, I have a particular point that I wanted to go to. Oh, okay. Mm. I was, it was further down than I thought. I had it in my notes. Okay. So it says CNN Insider says senior editors should have been treated the story with caution from the beginning because the Israeli military had a track record or false 
exaggerated claims that subsequently fall apart. Mm. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I'll tell you, I, I, one of the things I was involved with last year was confronting RFK on Shireen Abu Akla, the, mm -hmm. the journalist who was assassinated by Israel. And when you dig into that one, Israel lied from the get-go. It was amazing. First, it was the, she was shot by a Palestinian. Then it was, oh, well, it had to have been an accident. Mm -hmm. And once you see that once or twice, you know that absolutely anything coming out of the IDF is not trustworthy. No. They CYA continually. They lie outright. Yeah. CNN knows that. Mm -hmm. Anyone who reports in that region knows that. Yeah. And this article also calls into question about the 40 beheaded babies, Ooh, which is, you know, does is not based in fact. There's no evidence to the claim about 40 beheaded babies. Mm -hmm. So, and then on top of that, there's also claims of the fact, which this article doesn't get into, about the sexual assault that is allegedly done by the Palestinian resistance, which there is no evidence of. So when people say, oh my God, they are worded, you know, I gotta be careful what I say on you on YouTube, but they are worded people, you know, women, or they beheaded babies, right? Yeah. There is no evidence to suggest any of that that has happened. Let me throw in something because uh, those are those are the two areas that I'm I'm you know if if you want to carve me out as like you know a special interest group, you know mm -hmm. Jewish, mm -hmm. female, mm -hmm. Israel harms both of them with the way that they weaponize accusations and cry wolf, both with anti-Semitism continually. And also this with the sexual assault. Mm. Because if you start using sexual assault accusations in this manner so that you can you can use you can have camouflage for whatever else you do, that mm. hurts women because then we're not going to believe when things happen. Mm. Period the end. It's it's horrible. It's it's uh look at um you know, what happened with Emmett Till? Good, good point. Sexual assault is horrendous. It must be prosecuted to the top extent of the law. It should be taken seriously. But that doesn't mean that there aren't people who weaponize it. And that has to be acknowledged and dealt with. And Israel is one of the biggest perpetrators of this. Yep, absolutely. So let me go into this. It says the push for more balanced coverage has been complicated by Israel's block on foreign journalists entering Gaza except under IDF control and subject to censorship. That has helped to keep the full impact of the war on Palestinians off of CNN and other channels while ensuring that there is continued focus on the Israeli perspective. A CNN spokesperson rejected allegations of bias. Mm. So this is literally Israel controlling the narrative on the ground so that CNN gets a one-sided view of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I just really don't know how else to put it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're, you know, we're, we're plugged in because we're in social media. We deal with indie news. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are some, you know, regular Jones and Jay, uh, you know, uh, Janes and, and Johns on the street that don't hear this. You know, all they see is what, what CNN puts out and what the uh, mainstream media puts out. And that's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they are fed the narrative that, oh, my God, look at these horrible barbarians. Yeah. Genuinely. And, sorry, go ahead. 
No, no. Gen and they genuinely believe it because they, they hear nothing else. Yep. Absolutely. So with this is that Israel basically making sure that IDF accompanies the journalists on the ground and making sure that they don't go into areas that would ruin their narrative. This is this is like a social worker who goes to a home of abusive parents and they make sure the social worker doesn't go into the basement where they keep the kids in cages. That if is. they never see it, then they don't ever ask questions. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to remember something. Some of these CNN correspondents and reporters that are on the ground, they also have hearts and emotions. Seeing what's really going on may drive them to tell the raw truth so they can't be shown the areas that will humanize the Palestinian people. Exactly. And if they're embedded with the IDF, they're going to make friends. So, yep. oh, yeah, <laughs> this guy over here told me that this this is a situation. You know, I trust him. Mm -hmm. it's, it's another uh, obstacle. Yep. So let me share this as well. It says, some staffers say that the first few weeks of which CNN reported the Hamas attack like it was 9-11, more space was made for the Palestinian perspective, giving the escalating death toll and destruction from Israel's retaliatory attack on Gaza. Now. Remember how they were trying to uh, uh, basically shut down all uh, communications? Mm-hmm. There's a reason for that. Yeah. So here's what the what I will also want to share. Some say the problem is rooted in years of pressure from Israeli government and allied groups in the US combined with the fear of losing advertising. Mm. I would like for you to expand on that just a little bit, if you can. Losing on advertising. I'm not too sure I can expand on that, but I'm sure that the heads of the advertising companies are probably at least some of them are Zionist, mm -hmm. or or oh. buddies with with other people who are Zionists, and you know, of course they're gonna like follow along. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, it all goes back to money. It, it does. When people talk about the coverage from these corporate news stations, you see who controls them right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. It's always the Exxon Mobiles, the Pfizer's, the Conoco Phillips, the Mercs. It's the Walmarts. <laughs> it's the AT and T's, the Verizons. You know, it's always the Microsofts. It's always these big corporations. They're in your face. They let you know we own them. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's 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 also there's that, and there's also the fact that you know. RFK said it outright a, a while back, which is basically Israel is our aircraft carrier in the uh, Middle East. Mm -hmm. Israel is basically, in, in, in one way, a, a U.S. military base. That's all it is. it is. It's an excuse to be able to go in and control everything else. Mm -hmm. So there's that, too. It's empire. Absolutely. I, I, I've said it before. As far as, you know... It's that attack dog that they need. This is this is why they have military conscription in Israel. If you are within military age and you are you travel to Jew, uh, sorry to uh, Israel as a Jewish person, you literally have to sign up for the military. Mm -hmm. Or you go to you jail. Don't have a yeah. so or you go to you, jail. <laughs> yeah, they're basically. Look, if you are Israeli in a military age, you're doing to you what they want to do to us. Yeah. And then and once, you don't, once you're yeah. in it, then you're part of the system. And, uh, oh, gosh, well, you were involved with it, too. So, you know, it's psychologically, a lot of people will go, hey, I've got to justify this in my own mind. 
you know, how many people are going to buck uh, the system and, and say, no, I won't be a part of it. You get ostracized. You get jailed. Yep. How many people have the fortitude to, do, to uh, stand against that? By the way, I happen to know somebody who uh, worked, who uh, served in the IDF. He is mm. very, very, very pro-Palestinian now. And he deals uh, with PTSD every single day. Oh, oh my gosh. I bet. I want to share this too, because this is really interesting. CNN's founder, Ted Turner, caused a storm when he told The Guardian in 2002 that Israel was engaging in terrorism against the Palestinians. I want you guys to know how huge that is. Ted Literally. Turner. <laughs> Ted Turner, the founder of CNN, went up against Israel. Wow. Holy crap. Can you guys believe that? This was back in, yo, this is 22 years ago. Things That's were, little, yeah, things were a little bit different then. I mean, that back in 87, Reagan stood up against Begin, Begin, uh, with the, uh, with Lebanon and said, yeah. you don't stop it. We're going to cut all your aid and boom, everything was fine. So things have yeah. changed. Can't, we, we better not uh, forget about USS Liberty. Oh, no, we shouldn't forget about the USS Liberty. When Israel literally attacked a U.S. vessel, mm -hmm. military vessel. Killed a whole lot of silver, service people. Yep, yep. And you know, you know how just the other day uh, Biden was saying, oh, gosh, if, uh, if um, U.S. service people get hurt, we will respond. We didn't respond mm -hmm. to Liberty at all. And Israel you literally attacked the United States. Yes. And they knew what they were doing. There was a flag. Yep. Even CNN's founders saw through Israel and how they were engaged in genocidal acts against Palestinians. By the way, Ted Turner is the ex-husband of Jane Fonda. Yes. Just in case anybody didn't know. <laughs> so there's a lot more in this article uh, that I would like to share, but this is this was a kind of a long article, but I do have some, some concluding thoughts on this. Uh, guys and girl, what are your concluding thoughts on this story? There's a lot more details that I didn't get into, but... Mm. Um, I, I would like to bring up, uh, for those who don't know, back in the 80s, before the 80s, there was a uh, something called the Fairness Doctrine, mm -hmm. where, whereby news had to show all sides of a story. It mm -hmm. was required. And yeah. Reagan pulled it. I think it was in 87 that he pulled it. Um, and... Think of how different it would be if CNN, NBC, ABC, Fox News had to platform Palestinians as well. Mm. And why wouldn't yeah. you? And and why wouldn't you if unless you were afraid of the truth? Because if it mm. if it was something that that wasn't true. You should be very easy. It should be very easy to debunk it. True. I agree. But we shouldn't have gotten rid of that fairness doctrine. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're yes, right, Katie. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the chorus. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> so here's my conclusions on this. This is why support for independent media is so important. Whether you watch commentators and journalists like myself, RBN, Savvy Savs, Lee Camp, Ron Placone, Danny Haifong, Kim Iverson, Fiorella Isabel, Seymour Hirsch, Margaret Kimberly, 
Max Blumenthal, Aaron Mate, Dan Caitlin Cohen, jo Caitlin, Caitlin Johnson, <laughs> Caitlin Johnston, Rania Kalik, and more. It's important to get the perspective of anti-imperialist voices who consider the facts outside of the corporate narrative. As we can see, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, CBS, New York Times, Washington Post, BBC, France 24, as many and many others, they cannot be trusted fully. They can give some good news and context in their reporting, but they will always be slanted in a pro-corporate, pro-imperialist perspective. Why? Because they need to keep the advertiser dollars flowing, mm -hmm. which comes from those big corporations, those big multinationals, who puppet the governments like Israel, France, Germany, Italy, the UK, Canada, and the United States. We must remain vigilant and not allow our consent to be manufactured by these powers. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.